Father, I'd like to begin where you began. If you could tell a little bit about your grandfather and how this played a role in what you are doing today. Yeah, all the research of my organization, Yahadi, began by a family story because uh, my grandfather was deported from France to Ukraine in 42 as a military in a camp in the village of Ravaruska and when he came back uh, he never accepted to speak so uh, it began by this question what happened in Ravaruska and one day I went back to Ravaruska and I found the first mass grave. Yeah. How did you get the people to talk about that? It's relatively easy. People uh, want to speak before to die. We were present at the killings because they were watching or they were uh, working in requisition. And uh, there is a proverb in Russia who says that the war is finished when we bury the last victim. So for them we come to finish the war. What do you say about the people that are buried there, about how they're waiting? You know, uh, it's an impression I have since the beginning. Uh, most of these mass graves, uh, some are big, some are huge, uh, were unknown. Nobody said a prayer, nobody said a Kaddish. And uh, I have always this sensation that they wait for us since uh, 70 years, 80 years now. And um, it's inside the Bible also when uh, Cain is killing Abel. Um, God says, don't you hear that the blood of Abel is crying from from earth to heaven, so I, I think they are, they are waiting since long time. Yeah? Like every victim in the mass grave on the planet. Because a mass grave is a, is a destruction totally of identity. We know about the Nazi soldiers, but were sometimes the villagers complicit? You know, I would say that in the beginning, but when you have a fascist uh, killing Killing leaders, he never missed workers. I never found the country where Hitler was missing workers. In Soviet Union, he made a requisition. People had no choice in any case, because in Soviet Union, you couldn't refuse. So the people I interviewed, most of them were requisitioned. But when I go in a non-Soviet country, we found also people. So when you have a killer, it's the same in Iraq today. They never miss workers, never, because they share the belongings. So people are coming for the belongings. Is it, easy, is it easier for you being a Catholic priest rather than a Jewish rabbi to conduct this work? It depends where. It's sure that my team, I'm Catholic, but my team is not Catholic. The director is Protestant. We are from any religion. We are 25 people. And uh, it's sure that we try not to judge the people. We try to find the truth, to listen, not to judge, because we want to know where are the corpses of the Jews and gypsies that the Germans shot. We have found uh, at the moment 1 million point four people and uh, uh, we work in very complex countries so if we were showing our feelings it would be the end of investigation. It's like a policeman, you know, when he interrogates somebody he has not to show his feelings otherwise they will not speak. You see this firsthand. How do you deal with Holocaust deniers? In France they are not legal so we never meet them. Uh, they attack us on the media, it's very frequent. But the first denier was Himmler, was Hitler. In the Nuremberg trials, uh, they never recognized what they did. And so uh, the people today were the deniers, are the followers. As I say, they are the sons of Himmler and Heydrich. And so they hate the Jews. So it's a way to, to deny history. They also don't accept any of the genocide. I never saw pledging for Amer Armenian genocide or genocide in Rwanda. They, they deny any genocide. It's a, it's a hate disease, that's it.